G'day and welcome back. So today we'll be looking at how to create that look we had in the intro. So we're going for a Super 8 look, but more of a expired Super 8 look. Now, is that cheating? Yes. Let's get into the grade. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this into a four by three. Let's go to timeline, output blanking, one, three, three, and that'll give us that nice four by three timeline. Now in this node here, we're gonna balance our footage. Now I know our look is gonna be very different from this balanced look, but it's always important for me to start at a neutral position. So we're just gonna do a really quick balance here. So I'm just gonna make sure our blacks and our whites are sitting in a good position. So let's just have a look, bring down some of the darker areas and just bring down our overall brightness. Around about there looks pretty good. And then just pushing some of that blue into the mid-tones. And we're looking pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more red. So it looks all pretty good. Maybe just bring down some of these mids. All right, so now we have a pretty good looking image. So before and afterwards, and we're just starting in a nice neutral position. Now in our second node here, let's make a new node. So Alt S for a serial node. This one here, we're gonna call it contrast. Now all we're gonna do is make a simple contrast curve. So in our custom curves, let's just bring it down slightly. Bring it down a little bit more in our higher points, our white areas. We're hitting this face around here. So before and afterwards, and we're just bringing it down just a little bit. Now our next node, Alt S again. This is where we're gonna create that look. We're gonna do this using the RGB mixer, a mixer that no one uses but it's actually really good. Now I came up with this look when I was smucking around one day and decided I could do something a little bit different than I normally would. What we're gonna do now in our red output, we're gonna change it to 1.25. In the green, we're gonna to go to negative 32. Blue is negative six. Now moving over to our green output, we're gonna go negative 30. And we're gonna go in our green 1.7. Blue is negative 42. Now moving on to our blue output, we're gonna change our red to 40, so 0.4. Green output, 67. I should've just wrote that in. I don't know why I'm bringing it up like this. Now in our blue, we're gonna change this to 12, so 0.12. Now we already have a funky looking image here. We're off to a good start. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate these skin tones. Now to do this, we're gonna use a layer node. So Alt L to make a layer node. Now, if you don't know the shortcuts or you don't want to use the shortcuts, all you have to do is come to color nodes and then choose layer node up here when you have this node highlighted. But I'm all about shortcuts, so we're going to use that shortcut. Now, as you can see, our look has actually been taken away. So if I turn these nodes off, turn them on again, this isn't being affected anymore. All we need to do is qualify the skin. So let's go to our qualifier and click drag. You can either press Shift H to bring up your highlights or you can come up to highlights up here, which is a circle inside of a rectangle. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a kind of average key. So let's bring down some of those lows and let's bring up our width to get a greater color range. So as you can see, we have a pretty good selection, but I wanna clear up these areas here. So what we can do is use our plus qualifier and just click the skin where we need to add it in. Need to add it in there and here too. That's looking really good. Now I know I have a lot of areas here that are being affected, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is gonna blur it out. Then we're gonna clean it up in the whites, in the darker areas, or in our blacks. And then we're gonna bring it all together. And we're just gonna clear it up a fair bit. Now, as you can see, these darker areas in the beard and hair are also being affected, but that's okay. Because I'm going for a color shift with this type of look. So I actually want this to be affected. I want the colors to almost bleed in to other colors in the scene. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange, but it will make more sense once we have our look. So let's just blur it out a bit more though and try to avoid that dancing noise. And let's soften it right out. So something there looks pretty good. Now let's see what that looks like. So Shift H. Now we need to fix this part up here. That's okay. Go back to our plus and we'll just click it. So now we have that really good selection. Well, obviously our face is way too orange. We need to blend it in a bit more. So let's go down to our Kia and let's bring it right down. 
and we'll say about there looks pretty good. So we'll say mid 600s. Now let's go back to our look and in our primaries, we're going to push it into a orangey red kind of look. There we go. So beforehand and then after. So we're already getting that really color shifted look which is good. If you've ever developed film incorrectly or shot expired film, you know that it has a lot of color shifting in it. So it's looking pretty good so far. Now in our next node, so Alt S, we're gonna blur this image out a lot because it is Super 8, meaning that it is gonna be a lot softer than the digital look, of course. Let's bring it right up to 58. So beforehand, we have that digital sharpness. Now afterwards, we have a much softer image. Now I know that looks really soft, but that is okay. We're actually probably gonna soften it even more later on. So in our next node here, we're gonna build upon that red look. So in our gain, we're gonna push it towards red a fair bit. So before, and then afterwards. Now also, I think what we need to do is, in this node here, we are too saturated. So let's go down to saturation and let's change it to, let's say 38. And then in our color boost, let's actually bring up the colors that are least saturated. So as you can see, we have this really two-tone look now, which is looking really good. Maybe even take some saturation out. We could even maybe bring up some of those shadows. Alrighty, looking good. So our next step is another node, so Alt S to make a serial node. So in this node here, we're going to go to Effects. And we're going to type in color or CO. We're going to put a color space transform on. We're going to be using a Kodak film LUT. To do this properly, we need to be in Cinelog. So in this node here, by color space transform, output gamma, we want to be on Cineon film log. As you can see, it's really washed out, looks horrible, but that is okay. Now let's go to a LUTs folder. Let's take off effects. Let's choose one that suits this look a little bit more space. Now we have the D55, looks pretty good. D60 and D65. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go with the D65. So here we have that look. We have a really nice washed out look to it. We can always adjust saturation and contrast if we like, but we're gonna call that good for now. So our next step is to get rid of this LUTs folder and make a new node. Alt S and in effects, we're going to type in FIL. I'm going to chuck some film grain on. Now, if you don't have the studio version of Resolve, that is okay. I've made a video about how to add film grain in to Resolve without the studio version. So I'll leave a link below where you can watch that and you'll get an understanding how to put that in. It's actually really simple. But since I do have the studio version, what I'm going to do is in my presets, I'm going to add 8mm 500T. Now, let's put the grain size up. And I actually like the softness to be quite soft. Now I'm gonna press Shift F, and that's gonna give me a better screen to work in. That's the effect screen. But at the moment, it's not really doing the much as I'd like it to do. Let's change it around. I wanna get a really thick type of film grain. I want this image to be really dirty. And as you can see, we actually have a little bit more sharpness from that film grain. We might actually have to go back and soften our image a little bit more. And I think we need to be more pronounced. So we're just fooling around to it until we get something we like. So let's put our ratio right up. Now we can blend this in a little bit better. I actually do want it to be over the image completely. But let's just take it out of the shadows just a little bit. Push it up in the mid-tones more. And push it right up into the highlights. It's gonna give us a better looking image, a better spread to our image. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's just blend in a little bit more. So let's go to Ikea and let's just bring it down ever so slightly. And maybe add a little bit more saturation to our image. First, let's try it in the color boost, see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more saturation. And I feel like we could actually make this image a little bit more red. So let's go back to this node here and just push it in. All right, that looks really good. Because this is a old camera, per se, what I'm gonna do, first make these nodes less annoying. So I'm gonna add a vignette on, so Alt S for a new node. Let's add a vignette on, 
chuck this bad boy across this guy's face. Now at the moment, if we put this vignette on, as you can see, it's hitting the middle of the area. So we don't want that. So we needed to hit the outside. So come down here and click this circle with inside a box. DaVinci is all about putting circles inside boxes for some reason. As you can see, the area around is darker now. So beforehand and then afterwards. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna blur out the edges. Now I could use a box blur and make this even better, but I'm actually just gonna leave it and use the blur tool down here because I want everyone to be able to do this without using the studio version. Now I know I did the film grain, but of course you can do the film grain without studio version. So let's just blur it out a little bit. So that's before and that's afterwards. And that's just bringing that image together a lot better. We also have a really nice two-tone look going on. So we have an orange here, orange red, I should say. It's probably more red, to be honest. And then we have this green here. Now to tie this image all together, what we're gonna do, let's go to the edit. So in the edit, I'm gonna make this a little bit longer. I should have shot this longer, but then I started mucking around. Then I realized I could get something that's quite interesting. So I'm using this footage here that I was gonna use it for something else, but that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the speed and we're gonna put little cuts inside our edit. So let's highlight all our clips here, right click, come up to change clip speed, and we're gonna change it to 20 frames per second. So okay, now you look at that image, it looks a little bit off, which is good. Then we're gonna make little cuts, like so. That's a big cut, but that is okay. And we'll delete these cuts. You know what? We need more cuts. I'm all about uh, chucking in these cuts. We want to have a really kind of studded look to it. So again, let's just make some simple cuts. We could even repeat a cut. So let's bring this across. And we'll just... Now to copy clip, all you have to do is highlight it, hold Alt, and then drag it. You have a copied clip. And just making cuts everywhere. Alrighty, so let's play it. Looking good. Now we're gonna put an overlay on top of this. So I have this footage here that I got from the YouTubes. Now I'll leave a link below so you can download this. Also credit the person whose it was. Let's drag it into our timeline here. Now it has this overlay on it, which I wanna use, and I wanna use the countdown. So we're gonna get a position where the time stops. So here, now we're gonna ungain this. Then we're gonna chop it, highlight it, holding Alt, drag it across. Then we're gonna relink it and move it across. Let's say about here looks pretty good. With this overlay here, what we're gonna do is come up to composite again. We're gonna change it to color burn. We're gonna change opacity around to, let's say 42. And then we're just gonna copy a whole bunch of them. Highlight them all, drag them across. Now we have a bunch selected. Now we can put them in a compound clip to make it easier. So we'll call this overlay. And as you can see, we have a nice overlay. Drag that across. Now we just need to fix this up a little bit because as you can see, it's not hitting down here. So in our overlay, we need to zoom in a little bit. So we'll come up to transform and just bring up that zoom. Maybe even zoom in a bit more. Looks good. Let's play our image. So as you can see, now we have this overlay on it, which is bringing it all together. But also our image is actually probably a little too sharp. So what we can do, let's just do it in the timeline and let's just blur it out just a little bit more. All right, now back to our edit, put the overlay back on and have a look. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. So now we have this cool expired super eight look. Now to tie this all together, like I keep saying, let's put some super eight sound effects on. I got this from Freesound, but I'll leave a link below. And let's play this bad boy. See what it sounds like. I think we need to cut basically here. I don't need the, uh, actually, you know what we should do? So after that, click here, we should cut. So what we can do is highlight this, highlight this, link them all together by pressing Control-Alt-L, bring them down, make a cut here, 
delete, pushes everything across. Maybe move this one a little bit here. It'll fade in, that's cool. So let's start it off. There you have it, a Super 8 vintage expired film look. So it looks pretty good. It'll never look as good as original Super 8, of course, but we've gone pretty far. So we've gone from this image here to this really digital looking image, because of course it's shot in digital, to this image here. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below what you think I could have done differently, what you think the image was missing maybe, or did you think it was good? Thanks for watching. If you have any other things you would like to see, make sure to comment below. And I've been Drew from Gringo Productions. Have a great day and thanks for watching.